Hey everybody, welcome to the Cylinder Lab. In this video, we're going to be installing Oracle Linux 7 and Oracle Database 12C version 12.1.0.1 .1 Standard Edition 1 on VMware ESXi 6. This video is part 2. Earlier in part 1, we created our VM and installed the operating system. In part 2, we're going to be preparing the server for the Oracle installation. Let's prepare the server for the Oracle database. Let's check disk space. The documentation says that for Oracle Standard Edition 1, we need this amount of disk space. Now we'll check memory. The documentation says we need a minimum of 1 gig of memory. The recommended is 2 gigs of memory or more. Check memory. Now we'll check swap. The recommendations for swap space is this. Between 1 gig and 2 gigs, they would like to see one and a half times. Between 2 and 16, equal. Check swap. Check the Linux distribution, the kernel, and the architecture. To check your Linux distribution, your kernel, and your hardware architecture, we're going to be looking for Oracle Linux 7. And one of these. And verify this. With this command, I'm verifying my Linux distribution. With this command, I'm making sure that it's 64-bit. And with this command, I'm checking my kernel. Install required packages. According to the documentation, these are the packages that are required. Here are the packages that are required. To check if they are installed, Do this. Not installed. When you encounter one that is not installed, do yum install and then the package. and repeat until you've gone through the entire list. Now we create required groups and user. The documentation says that we need the following groups and user. I'm going to create o install DBA and the Oracle account. I'm not going to be doing this. We've created our groups and now we're going to create the Oracle account. 
This command creates the Oracle user and specifies the oInstall group as the primary group and the DBA group as the secondary group. Now set your password for the Oracle account. And we can do a little sanity check. The UID, group ID, there we go. Kernel parameters. So a couple notes before we get started. What we're going to do is we're going to review some kernel parameters and determine if any need to be changed. If the current value of a parameter is higher than what Oracle is suggesting for the minimum value, then we're not going to change it. And also worth noting is that these kernel parameters are minimum values only, and for a production system, they will likely need to be tweaked. So starting with semaphore parameters. The minimum recommended values are here. The command to check it or check them is here. My values are here and this here needs to be increased. Next we're going to check this and it says that the minimum should be 40% of the size of physical memory in pages we calculate what the 40% would be and the current value is this so we're going to need to increase it. This value here should be half the physical memory in bytes. We do the calculation here and this will need to be increased. This value is good. This value needs to be increased. This range, minimum 9,000, maximum 65,500. The range will need to be widened. This value here will need to be increased. And this one is good. So now we know what needs to be changed. We're going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to edit this file here. I've put my new values here. Anything that needed to be changed, I've put it here. Save my file. By putting my changes in this file, the values will persist when we reboot the machine. To change the values now on our system, we're going to do this. Review the output, make sure everything's good, and now we're done with kernel parameters. Yeehaw! Now we're going to have a look at resource limits for the Oracle software installation user. In our case, that's the Oracle user. So the documentation talks about these four different areas. No file, the soft limit, the hard limit, number of processes, soft limit, hard limit, stack, soft, limit, hard limit, 
and then there's a blurb about Memlock. We're going to go over these one by one. So it's important to log in as the Oracle software installation owner now, usually the Oracle user. And so the first one we're going to look at is the open file descriptor. And when I did, or you check it with this command here. When I did it, I got this for the soft limit, which is fine. For the hard limit, I got this number, but they're recommending this. So this will need to be changed. For the next one, the number of processes available to the Oracle user. The soft limit is set to this, and the hard limit is set to this. So some changes will be needed here. The size of the stack segment of the process, soft limit, hard limit. So I'm going to increase this to this value. And this by default is unlimited. And although it says at the most it should be this, it's already set to unlimited. So I think I'm just going to leave it. And then finally, there's this about the maximum locked memory limit, memlock. It says at least 90% of the current RAM when huge pages memory is enabled, and at least three gigs when huge, huge pages is disabled. So I did this command here to see everything, and it's set to 64K right now. Now this is straight out of the document titled Oracle Database Quick Installation Guide 12C Release 1 for Linux 64-bit. Um, we are not using huge pages. And setting this to 3 gigs um, when huge pages is disabled seems odd to me when I don't even have that much physical memory. Um, I tried to go on the internet to find more information about it, to find something that supports this claim, but I couldn't find anything. Anything I did find about Memlock was all related to huge pages. So I'm going to skip over this and just see if the Oracle installer complains about it. And if it does, then we'll deal with it then. So now it's time to modify this file should be done as the root user because the Oracle user does not have permissions to edit the file. And I'm going to be putting this into the file. Save the file and then afterwards you'll need to uh, log out your Oracle user, log back in for the changes to take effect. You should make sure you do this step before you proceed with the installation. going to create the directory where the Oracle software is going to be installed. I've chosen U01 app. Ownership. And permissions. Now we're going to check the environment variables and the umask for the Oracle user. We want to make sure that there are no Oracle environment variables set. And we want to verify our umask. This is good. No action required. As root, do the following command. Now note that if you reboot the machine between now and the time that you actually begin the Oracle installation, you'll need to repeat this xhost plus command. After you've done the xhost plus command, you should go ahead and do a sanity check and try to run the xclock utility. If you find it's not installed, you can go ahead and do a yum install like you see on the screen. When you try to run xclock, you should see a little GUI window like this. Next, switch over to the Oracle user and in a terminal window, do the export display command you see here. So 
export display equals colon zero dot zero. After you've done that, do the X clock command and you should see a little GUI window as the Oracle user. If you don't, then you should try to troubleshoot this. I'm going to change my screen resolution to this to satisfy the installer. Let's download the Oracle database. The files are downloaded, let's unzip them. The files are located here. And we're going to unzip them. That concludes part two. Join me in part three, where we actually install the Oracle database. Finally, this video is free of advertisements. If you enjoyed what you watched, please click subscribe, the like button, or leave a comment. Why? To improve my rank. You see, YouTube uses all kinds of factors to determine where my video ends up in the search results. Thank you.